here, 730 yet. I'm a few minutes early today. Happy Monday, beautiful people. Anita, greetings. Audrey, shalom. Sis, Vinette, greetings, greetings. Happy Monday, beautiful people. What the heck? We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm early today. I'm really late, but I'm early. According to the time I said we was going to go live, so <laughs> a minute or two early. Anyway, happy Monday, beautiful people. It is August the 8th, 2022, day 180 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, and of the four-year consecutive day count, day 1,198. We're picking back up in the book of Lika on page 421. Father, you are more than amazing. Also, yesterday, we left off, and they went on a day of recreation after... Um, a new Sahaj realized he had to take his kingdom back. Tip, bless up, sis. Listen, so he was like, I want it to not. And it was like, um, well, see, let us explain to you how this program really rolls, right? So now he at that point, he's accepted his judgment. And now we're just about to clean up the house, right? We're about to correct our mistakes. All right. What is this chapter? 17, wherein this history hath overlapped the running story, hear ye how it was with the Hura and his kingdom, Vara Pishhanaha, which Lika visited prior to the deliverance of the hills of Hada. For to accomplish the resurrection of Vara Pishhanaha, Lika had previously sent, Lika had previously sent swift messengers to Yagu, goddess of Hamistos in Ethera, to bring an Avalanza capable of 6,000 million brides and bridegrooms for the mid-harvest. Accordingly, at the time Lika and his Rapon host were visiting Ahura, the goddess Yagu came down to her Avalanza fully equipped. Her Avalanza was egg-shaped and veiled without and was seven miles high and five miles wide. Her ship is that big. King, blessings. Well, listen, I figured out. I guess this should not have been rocket science to me yesterday. In yesterday's video, to, at the end, we was just talking. Um, uh, Owasby College University said that the next... Uh, resurrection of be like 2048 and i think it was key or somebody that said yeah i heard that too so i'm like how y'all coming up with these numbers and i had to think about it <laughs> clearly it tells us if the cosmon era started in 1848 and at the beginning it tells us that the different year marks that there are resurrections um there's one at 200 years then 400 years then 600 years and i think then a thousand years and so on and so forth right um so i was like wait a minute that's probably how they came up with 2048 so um i did the math from 1848 from the time uh, the cosmon era began until 2048 is the first 200 year mark i'll be 69 years old my g jan grand rising okay a little side fun note. All right. Go back. Matter of fact, let's just start over. Verse 1, chapter 17, page 421. Wherein this history hath overlapped the running story. Hear ye how it was with Ahura in his kingdom, Varapesh Hanaha, which Liga visited prior to the deliverance of the hills of Hara. For to accomplish the resurrection of Varapesh Hanaha, Lika had previously sent swift messengers to Yagu, goddess of Hamistos in Ethera, to bring an avalanza capable of 6,000 6, million brides and bridegrooms for the mid-harvest. Accordingly, at the, at the time, Lika and his Rapon host were visiting Ahura, the goddess Yagu came down in her avalanza fully equipped. Her avalanza was egg-shaped and veiled without and was seven miles high and five miles wide every way, habitable throughout. On the outer surface, but under the veil, were 12,000 porches of banisters. The propelling vortices were within the center, and the workmen were in the summit. 
On the lowest porch were 500,000 Isinars, and on the highest porch, 1,000 Trumpers. Yegu's compartment and the place of the Holy Council were in the midst, and her throne faced the north like the Earth's vortex. Auntie, grand rising. I'm sorry, blissful rising. Ohura said to Lika, son of Jehovah, my brides and bridegrooms I give to thee. Honor thou this dissolving kingdom by performing the marriage ceremony. Lika said, thy will and Jehovah's will be done. Thus was it arranged and the twain together with the Rapon host ascended the throne together and sat thereon. Ohura had previously provided his host and all four and a half thousand million brides and bridegrooms and arrayed them in white so that they anxiously awaited the coming of Yegu and were on the lookout and were on the lookout to see her magnificent ship descending. A place of anchorage had also been previously made together with accommodation for the spectators of whom there were 1,500 million being adopted wanderers rescued from the various hills during the past hundred years. The brides and bridegrooms were arranged in semi-circles facing the throne, leaving a place for the avalanza, but above them, so that when Yegu descended from her ship's bottom, she would be in the midst. While the ship's workmen were anchoring, Yegu and her holy council descended to the platform and saluted the gods and goddesses on the throne in the sign, the glory of the Father. And Lika said, I'm sorry. And Lika and the others answered under the sign, the abandonment of self. This is good. Yegu said, in Jehovah's name, am I come to answer the call of his son to deliver the emancipated sons and daughters. Lika said, behold, O daughter of Jehovah, the brides and bridegrooms are before thee. To thee, I give them in Jehovah's name. Yegu said, my beloved, Know ye the resurrection of the most high heavens? Response, reveal, O goddess, our faith is strong. Thereupon, Yegu instructed them and then followed the usual ceremonies, but concluding with the, with the seven, 70th degree of Emoth in Jehovah's voice to wit, to be my brides and bridegrooms forever. Response, to be thy brides and bridegrooms forever. O Jehovah, to labor for thee and to be mouthpieces for thy commandments and to be thy expression forever and to be in concert with thy most high gods for the resurrection of mortals and angels whom I receive as mine forever to be one with me and my kingdoms for which glory I accept you as my sons and daughters, brides and bridegrooms forever. Mm. Response, and thy sons and daughters I'm sorry, and be thy sons and daughters to be one with thee forever, thou most high Jehovah. Yegu said, behold the crowns, behold the crowns the father bestoweth upon his love to be theirs forever. Here at the Ray, here at the Ray Pond chiefs with Lika gathered the curtains of light and wove crowns and cast them forth thousands of millions and the power of the great spirit through their wills bore them upon the heads of the brides and bridegrooms response crown of thy crown o jehovah glory be to thee creator of worlds yegu the fathership hath come for his chosen walk ye in and rejoice for ye are his harvest gods and goddesses are waiting for you as a woman waiteth for her firstborn they will receive you with joy and love. Yea, they are crying unto me, daughter of Jehovah, why tarriest thou so long? Lika now saluted the brides and bridegrooms and said, Arise, O my beloved, and go your ways. The father calleth. The brides and bridegrooms saluted, saying, Alas, we have not paid our teacher, O horror, and every one plucked from the rays of Jehovah's light a flower of love and cast it at Ahura's feet saying, most blessed of gods, love of my love, Jehovah be with thee. All right, son, I love you. Have a great day. Set apart, living, grand rising. Shayla, hey girl, hey. Uncle JB.
mother. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> okay. Verse 20, page 423. The brides and bridegrooms saluted, saying, Alas, we have not paid our teacher, Ohura, and everyone plucked from the rays of Jehovah's light a flower of love and cast it at Ohura's feet, saying, most blessed of gods, love of my love, Jehovah be with thee. Alicia, yeah, hey, girl, hey. Ohor responded not, only burst into tears. I know, too, right? I'm about to burst into tears, too. This was so beautiful. Look. Ohor responded not, only burst into tears. And now, whilst the brides and bridegrooms were going into the ship, Yigu came along the platform accompanied by the chief marshal and his staff, and these were, following, were followed by Yegu's high council. The Rapine chiefs rose up and received them, and they all sat on Jehovah's throne in relaxation and fellowship. Thus ended the ceremony. The music of the two spheres now commenced. Yegu and her host embarked, and she gave the word, Arise, and lo, the great avalanza started from its foundation amidst a universal shout of applause from the 4,000 million. Higher and higher rose the ship of fire toward the bridge Chindat, toward the Ethereum heavens. Oh, this is so good. 18. Chapter 18, page 4, 23. After the judgment of Anusahaj and Chisoda at Theovrakistan, Ohura asked Lika for assistance to remove the remainder of Varapish Hanaha to Hel Yusta, which Lika granted, allotting 10 million of his Ethereum hosts to accomplish it. With these, Ohura and Anusahaj and Shisoda accomplished the removal. And not many days after this, Suga was delivered from the hills of Alprag, of which event Ohura had been previously informed as to the time thereof. And he accordingly went to all Prague to be in readiness to receive Suga and help restore him if required. Suga, on his delivery from the knot where there had been 30 million bound, was bereft of reason, but not gentle like a Nusahaj, but fierce, battling right and left, very maddened, a very maddened maniac that neither saw nor heard, but raved and cursed with all his strength, choked up with madness. Oh, look. So look, I'm about to start getting, I ain't getting off, but I got to share this with y'all. Let me read this little, this little bit from this book, The Spirit Guide. I just remember that while reading this right here. Hold on one second. Oh, look, listen to this. I think it's a flight of the soul. They was talking about, uh, was it Flight of the Soul? Was it the first part? It talks about um, how clearly she's a studier of the OWASP, right? Susan B. Martinez. And she was talking about as she began observing, as they began to understand the different spirits, the ones who were seen more evil, listen to what she said, listen. I might look, I told y'all I ordered two of these, right? I got one upstairs in my bathroom that I keep that I'm gonna keep in there at all times so I can read, you know. I highlight it. I might I might have to run and go get that one. Hold on. Maybe maybe it says spirits at large. Hold on, let me just check. And it was talking. Oh, there it go. Okay. It's in chapter one, spirits at large, on page um on it start on page 26. Listen to this, what it says. It says right here, listen. Verse three, Sudga on his delivery from the knot where there had been 30 million bound was bereft of reason, but not gentle like a Nusahaj, but fierce battling right and left, a very mad maniac that neither saw nor heard, but raved and cursed with all his strength, choked up with madness. Okay, so this was going into how the spirits actually get that way and why they're, like, why they're like that way. And if they're born in a spiritual realm in chaos, 
sometimes or most of the times they don't really know well clearly you know they they eventually forget who they are and they just become raging maniacs right listen to what she says um she says gerd ham's country woman d and i'm just cutting right in so the name's gonna sound because you ain't you know you ain't read it it, it the name's not making sense but just listen gerd ham's country woman dion fortune 1881 has seen enough of the dark side to know that the entity causing the trouble may be a soul that is itself in distress, right? Remember, so when they go into a knot, they do. They become distressed, and they're covered by all the other millions of Drew, just Drew Haas, Fetals, and Familiars that were in them, it, that were under them in their kingdom, right? Because they get afraid, and now they latching on to their savior or their king for help. Help us, help us. And they in the middle of not balled up screaming, I'm not the savior. I am not the God. I am not a newbie, right? Listen, the entity causing the trouble may be a soul that is itself in distress and is too ignorant of post-mortem post -mortem conditions to know the harm it is doing by clinging so desperately to the living. So here it's talking about when you have, um, there was going through different um, examples of people who start experiencing all, when they, when a spirit grafts onto them, they start experiencing all this different type of trouble, right? And so she kind of break down like the, um, um, uh, like the split personalities, how it seems somebody, they, they go from one person to another person to another person, all while the native spirit is in a band, so in a sunken place. Tabitha, hey girl, hey, Miss Amazing Wonder, Shalom, Set Apart Living, Grand Rising. And she was saying uh, that, that the person who was, uh, they call it the drowning person, right? That they they really couldn't, change the situation so to speak because the spirit that clung on to them clung so desperately that they caused the per the uh, the original person's whole world to like completely change right it was completely chaotic michaela michaela shalom listen the entity causing the trouble may be a soul that is itself in distress and is too ignorant of post-mortem conditions them being dead, not realizing that they they are they died, right? And too ignorant of post-mortem conditions to know the harm it is doing by clinging so desperately to the living. Her wording, clinging so desperately, is echoed in the words of Eugene Morey, 1988, one of America's most adept exorcists. I often think of an invading an invading entity. I'm sorry. I often think of an invading spirit entity as a drowning person desperately clinging to another for help when living on earth he was never given directions or an indication what he would find after dying he may think that possessing a living person is his sole option he knows of no other place to go right so if you die in chaos or you die not knowing um that there are higher heavens when you die they some of them tend to get afraid and the first living person they see it may not even be a family member nobody they've ever known depending on where they they could just be lonely they don't want to be alone they don't know where to go they have no guidance they're in that in-between place after death and <laughs> going to your first destination they're stuck there they don't want to be stuck there anymore so the first living person that comes along or is within their vicinity they latch on to right only a person who has been, I say they only can latch onto like the perfect candidate, somebody who has experienced trauma type things or, or whose spirit has already been put in the bands through some type of trauma or something like that. If the right person walks by, their spirit is going to graft onto them, right? I thought about this, that while, um, reading this and it's a whole lot more that it goes into giving details on that right it's it's good okay so let's go back page 423 chapter 18 verse 3 sudga on his delivery from the knot oh, i'm sorry i don't even think i read the part i read that but it talks about um the um the spirits being deranged 
and why they're deranged. And just like it said right here, they began to look at them after they, first of all, really began to understand that they are humans. They're lashing out because they don't know what to do, right? And it's just, it's, it's like two whole pages going into detail and giving more examples of different, um, different people and like famous, I ain't gonna say famous, but they became famous from the craziness that they did while having spirits attached to them, even mass murderers and stuff like Ted Bundy and a, a few other people, right? Verse three, Sudga on his delivery from the knot where they had been 30 million bound was bereft of reason, but not gentle like a Nusahaj, but fierce battling right and left and very a very maddened maniac that neither saw nor heard, but raved and cursed with all his strength, choked up with madness for all the curses of his broken down kingdom recoiled upon himself. The projective curses of his thousands of millions of slaves were piercing his soul from every quarter. But they, be, but they held him fast and carried him into the ship, which sailed for a hail Eusta, which he, I'm sorry, whither he was landed in the same condition. I read it again. But they held him fast and carried him into the ship, which sailed for a hail Eusta, whither he was landed in the same condition. Ahura was with him, and Ahura caused a circle of deliverance to assemble and labor in the restoration. And it required 30 days and nights to bring him round so that he could even see and hear. But as for his judgment, it was yet, it was yet a hundred days more before it manifested. So Ahura could not wait. So Ahura could not wait longer with him but returned to the hills where its hand was bound. The Akaluganus for its hand was to be delivered. But herein was Ahura also disappointed, for its hand was neither frightened nor wild nor mad, but limpid, helpless as water and without knowledge, more than a vessel of water. His energies had all been exhausted. And in a dead swoon, he lay in the heart of the knot. Him they also carried to hail Eusta. And Ahura provided for his restoration. But yet, ere Tayan awoke from his stupor, Ahura departed for Osiris, who was bound in the hills of Prayogatha. Osiris had been in hell now for more than a hundred years, and in a knot for fifty years. Whew. When the false Osiris was delivered, he was deranged, but preaching Jehovah, calling everybody Jehovah and everything Jehovah. Him they also carried to Hail Eusta and provided restoration for him. And Ahura went thither also to assist with all his wisdom and strength. Thus were delivered all the self-gods who had rebelled against Jehovah and established the great confederacy of which not one vestige was now left. But of all the angels delivered out of the hells and not, not one in ten was of sound judgment, whilst more than half of them were only Druhas at best. Thus was founded the new kingdom in hell Eusta, but yet in charge of the Ethereans who were, com who were to commit it to Anusahaj and his one-time confederates for their deliverance. It came to pass in course of time that Sudga and Tan and Osiris were restored to judgment. And in this matter, Anusahaj and Ahura and Shisoda were constant workers. And when they were all restored, they in turn failed to restore others to which labor they were committed till the close of dawn. Osiris and Tan and Sutga all desired to go before Lekum to be adjudged and sentenced. And they all sentenced themselves which was granted unto them. On this occasion, Osiris said, Thy lessons are near at hand, O Jehovah, but who will learn them? Mortals go insane because they have not learned to throw their cares upon thee, to throw government upon thee, O Jehovah. Is this not wisdom? To cast riches and kingdoms into thy lap, to own nothing, to have nothing. Is this 
Is this, I'm sorry, is not this the sum of the highest happiness? Whoso doeth this will battle against no man for anything in heaven or earth. But he who doeth otherwise will soon or late descend into hell. For what is hell but the opposite of bliss? What is battling against others but sowing the seed of anarchy in one's own soul? To battle against others is to gain the lower by sacrificing the higher, of which latter thou, O Jehovah, art the summit. To go against thee, O Father, is to go against one's fellows. To go against one's fellows is to go against thee. And who can go against thee, but will soon or late evolve his own fall? Thou hast given to mortals kings, queens, and shown them that soon or late their kingdoms will fall to pieces. And yet lords and gods, seeing these things, will not believe. Everyone in his own conceit imagineth his particular kingdom will be governed more wisely than all his predecessors. And yet he is also fallen. Now will I turn to find thee, O Jehovah, and the search shall be everlasting. Kingdoms are nothing to me. All possessions, save wisdom and love, are but vanity and vexation. I know thou art above all else, and yet thou that, and I'm sorry, I know thou art above all else, and yet thou art that that hath given thyself all away, so that none can look upon thy face. Verily hast thou hid thyself away, to be like unto thee is to hide away the self of one's self, and that that will remain, and that that will remain will be thy mouthpiece and thy hand. Then spake Sudga unto Jehovah, saying, Why was I puffed up, seeing that I created not even my own self? Neither had I anything in earth or in heaven to use or to work with, but the substance that was made already. Yea, I leapt into thy garden, which thou hast planted. I raised up my voice against thee, because thou wert too holy for my gross senses to behold. I condemned thee. I wanted thee gross. I could not look upon thee, that I could walk around thee and behold thy stature. I saw that all men were like unto me in this. Therefore, I made a figurehead of myself. I said unto thy children, behold me. And at first they were pleased because they imagined they had found a creator they could measure. Ooh. Ooh. Boy. Yes, baby. Hold on. That might be the title. They imagined they found a creator they could measure. I'll start verse 20 again. Page 425. Therefore, I made a figurehead of myself. I said unto thy children, behold me. And at first they were pleased because they imagined they had found a creator they could measure. But thine eye was upon me. Thine hand pointed the way and the manner of my iniquity. And they searched me out and found I was but a man like unto themselves. Wherefore, they condemned me. The fool acknowledges no person save he can grapple therewith. And he find the arms and the length thereof and the feet and their sounding place. How vain I was in this, O Jehovah. He that professes thy person, I denounce as a fool, because I saw not thy completeness. Thou sufferedest me to pursue my vanity. Because I had risen above acknowledging thy person, I was forced to make man the all highest. And this drove me to make myself the all highest man. But thou camest not against me to beat me from mine iniquity, but gave me full play to do my utmost. Yep, he let everybody see it to the end of themselves. Hey, babe. But thou camest not against me to beat me from my iniquity, but gavest me full play to do my utmost. On all sides thou hast encompassed thy creation with liberty. Even thine enemy thou hast not restrained. He standeth in public saying, Jehovah, I deny thee. If thou art mightier than I, strike me down. Behold, I deny thee and thy person, 
thou void nothingness, thou fool, creator with thy half created world, thou who has. Go ahead. I'm going to read all verse 23 again. On all sides, thou hast encompassed thy creation with liberty. Even thine enemy thou hast not restrained. He standeth in public saying, Jehovah, I deny thee. If thou art mightier than I, strike me down. Behold, I deny thee and thy person. Thou void nothingness, thou fool creator with thy half created world. Thou who has created sin and created misery, thou father of evil, O thou dumb nothing. Yea, even to him thou hast given free speech, and he buildeth up his own soul in his way. And for a season he is the delight of the Druk and the Druze. Yea, they fasten upon him, and he gaineth a multitude of evil ones, divided one against another. But the seed of his curses taketh root in them, and he becometh encompassed with foulness and bondage. To find harmony in thee, O Jehovah, to measure the goodness of thee, to rejoice in one's joys, to treasure thy best gifts, to laud thy love, to love thee because thou hast given me power to love and things to love, to rejoice in thy fruits and flowers and all perfected things, to harp forever upon thy glories and the magnitude of thy creation, to sing praises to thee for harmony wherever found, to love, to comprehend all good things, to find the good that is within all men and women, to rejoice in delights, to teach others to rejoice, and to search after all perfected beauties and goodness and righteousness and love, these shall be my service unto thee, my everlasting Father. Amen. <laughs> to seek not to find imperfections, to seek not to find in harmonies, to seek not to find evil, to seek not to find ugliness, to seek not to find evil in others, nor their darkness, nor shortcomings, to seek not to prove imperfections upon thee, O Jehovah, to find no fault with thee, to complain not against thee, to complain not for trials, nor for hardships, nor for the evils others inflict me with, to quibble not because I cannot comprehend thy vastness, to quibble not for myself, to speak not evilly against anything thou hast created. Oh, make thou me strong and wise forever. I want you to talk to me that way. I want you to treat me like respect like that. <laughs> Always, babe. Talk to me that... Hold on, what you just said? I said always, babe. I always talk to you like that. Hold on. Don't man. I? Hold on, man. Don't be on fire. Okay, we're, we're, on, we're on the roll, right? He's yeah. speaking his praises to the Father. No interruptions. Yeah. Tayan spake to Jehovah saying, wherein is, the limit, wherein is the limit of experience, O Jehovah? <laughs> and how short have I... Look, you messing me up, babe. Come on back over there. Fix your plate. You gonna push me off like that? She brew. Listen, sis, we corrected the issue yesterday. Everybody say hey to Sheep. Look, mom was the first one to say something to Shebrew. <laughs> Shebrew, sis, is back in the house. Look, soon as we got off yesterday, I was on it, checking to see how do we get her back in the chat. I guess YouTube ain't all that bad. They may not be fully Christian. They may not be fully Christian. Everybody say, hey, the Hebrew. Okay. All right, y'all, let me go back. Okay. Yeah, so word of caution. If you, now here's what I will recommend. You know how you got rogue people coming in posting porn links? As many times as they post, everybody, I know maybe one or two people may or I'll get it. And that's, I've seen it on anybody. So anytime I go to, Say La Channel or Cosmic How, any one of our brethren or sister in, and somebody pop up and if they doing something live and in a live oh. chat, they pop up with them suspicious links or point clearly you can tell they're point links. 
Don't just, uh, if you got wrenches, don't just time them out. Hit report and then click pornography. If everybody's clicking that, what's going to happen? Because sometimes it'll report, then a bot from YouTube will just be like, okay, this is not violating any kind of principles, and they'll put it back. But if you keep doing it, I'm not sure how many times you got to do it before they completely time you out. And I think my mom, she said, she brew, so sorry for my fat fingering. If you fat finger it, I think at least, how many times did you, did you always do it? My like five times? I think at least five times. It'll automatically, uh, it'll autom um, YouTube will automatically hide them. And delete them even though they can see you you will not be able to see anything that they post right so i figured that out by trying to bring shebrew back in and what they do they take them and they put them if you go in your if you go to your if you go to your settings in youtube what is it it's the okay so you gotta like hit manage videos and then on the left side down towards the bottom where you see like analytics in settings Hit settings, and then another box will pop up, and I think it, it's the community tab. If you hit community, you will get like three boxes. You will get people you have approved. No, you will get the people who you can give wrenches to. You will give, you will see the box. I think it's for like authorized commenters. And then, excuse me, and then people who are banned from commenting ever on your stuff. If you hit them, I think it's at least five times. Everybody, if you see anybody come in with porn links or anything on anybody's page, right? They just out of the blue. We give them praise to the most holy. They come in posting porn links. Everybody hit, click on that jank, hit report, and hit the porn option. And it's going, a matter of fact, I think it'll, um, I say hit porn because they're, they're posting porn links. But if they're just being obnoxious, there's a, a, uh, you can pick something that's obnoxious or bullying or, or whatever, but I'm specifically specifically talking about porn links, um, because I noticed that once because they'll in mind sometime and they'll come back later, depending on how many times they may post, and it hasn't happened in a while. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, but I noticed when I was trying to figure out how to bring Shibu back in, that's what they send everybody to that you report. If they report at least four to five times they'll automatically delete them, stop them from posting your stuff. They can see you, but if they're being obnoxious or posting stuff they shouldn't be or just posting irrelevant, irrelevant stuff, they'll automatically get sent there. And what you can do, if somebody has ended up in that box over in timeout where they shouldn't be, you just got to scroll through the list of names. And I found Shibu down there in that box. I'm like, well, that's interesting. So I thought... I pulled her out of timeout. You just click the X beside the person's name. You want to bring out that box. And I went to her, her channel and I copied her channel and I put her up in a box approved um, people who comment. She bro, I almost gave you a wrench yesterday. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh I, sis deserve a wrench for this. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do it, y'all. But yeah, if somebody up noxious, you just hit the thing. Don't just ignore them all together. Ignore them. Don't say nothing to them and just hit the thing and whatever it is they doing, just click that. And, and if it, you'll do it. Sometimes you'll see you'll do it. It'll delete their comment. But then if you scroll back up, they'll pop back in. I know that when I do it at least four times, it'll disappear all together. And even when people come back and watch the replay, and the live chat is rolling, you will never see them pop up. It'll delete them from everything, and it'll be like they've never even been in the video at all, right? So, Trina, hey, girl, hey. Okay. All right, so. I just had to say that she moved back in the building. Okay, sis, come through. Okay. All right, y'all, let's go back. Verse. Let me read verse. Who was that? How's that? My husband distracting me. Let's read verse 26 again on page 426. Okay, I forgot who was even speaking. Who was speaking, y'all? Sudga. Sudga was speaking now. Okay. Sudga, remember, he's been restored to his right mind, right? So he, he about to, they, they standing at the judgment seat. Okay, so he's going through lauding his, play, his praises on Jehovah. We're just going to pick the praises back up in verse 26. 
to seek not to find imperfections, to seek not to find in harmonies, to seek not to find evil, to seek not to find ugliness, to seek not to find evil in others, nor their darkness, nor shortcomings, to seek not to prove imperfections upon thee, O Jehovah, to find no fault with thee, to complain not against thee, to complain not for trials, nor for hardships, nor for the evil others inflicted with me, to quibble not because I cannot comprehend thy vastness, to quibble not for myself, to speak not evilly against anything thou hast created. O oh, make thou me strong and wise forever. Hey, don't push me away from me. <laughs> Listen, mm -hmm. don't be interrupting me when we giving praises to the most holy. That is mm -hmm. rude. That is rude. Mm -hmm. Tayin, speak to Jehovah. I heard what you said. <clears throat> you heard what I said. All right. Listen, Mr. Murphy. Verse 27. Tain spake to Jehovah, saying, Where is the limit of experience, O Jehovah? And how short have I not been before thee, my father? Behold, I had learned all philosophies. I had been taught for a long season in the right way, but I rebelled against thee, my creator. I had been taught to hoard not up anything, to own nothing, to desire nothing but wisdom and love. And thy teachers, O Jehovah, showed me the evidence of thousands of great rulers, and every one of them had come to evil and destruction. Why then, O Father, was I not wise in the evidence before me? But I rose up against all this testimony, and I fashioned a mighty kingdom. Yea, thou sufferedest me to try in my own way, and to the full. I went not by peace, but by war. I raised me up standing armies and great warriors without limit. By force I established myself, but only as a tree that groweth up and is cut down. But what was I in thy great universe, O Jehovah? What was my experience but the, but the repetition of others who had been before me? Now will I be wise, most cautious in my wisdom, and slow to proceed. Oh, you're taking a slow, steady route now, huh? Now will I be wise, most cautious in my wisdom, and slow to proceed. But how can I make my experience profitable unto others? That's good that he would even ask that question. Remind me of what my uncle said to me a few years ago. Like when you have hardships and you go through like your darkest nights and trials, right? Your darkest nights and trials. He said when you come out of it, he said, make the enemy pay you for what you went through. And he said, and I'm like, make the enemy pay you for what he did to you. And I'm like, okay, explain. He said, what you do, he said, everything that you went through, he said, now you can be a herald to other people who are going through that same thing and show them how you came out of your darkest night and how you came out on the other side. Let them know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. It gets better, right? And help them get through. That's how you make the enemy pay you back for all that you've done. You go out and you set other people free, right? Like you couldn't break me. And because you tried to break me, I'm going to help other people get from under your tyranny. He said, and the enemy will give up his host. <laughs> He'll give up his host. He has no choice, right? Because you are that light in a dark place that people are looking for when they think there is no other way to go but down, right? Just a little glimmer of light gives other people in that same position hope. He says, make the enemy pay you and pay you with interest and put penalties on top of it. I'm like, boy. <laughs> Listen, I love my family. Verse 30. Now will I be wise, most cautious in my wisdom, and slow to proceed. But how can I make my experience profitable unto others? Thou hast stood me afar off. Whoso heareth me will say, Ah, had I tried it, I had succeeded better. Thou prickest each one to go in and try, but they all fail. Yea, they reiterate their failure. But where is the profit of this experience unto others? How can I ever reach them, O Jehovah? 
What profit have I more than a mortal that dwelleth on the earth? Have not the angels testified for thousands of years that the rich man was crippling his own soul and that the king and queen were binding themselves with chains for the habitation of hell? But they will not heed. Everyone hopeth he at least will find a way to escape, to gain prestige over others, to be a leader, to have servants, to be idle, to live at ease, to have great possessions, to revel in luxuries. Are not these more powerful than experience, greater in the eyes of the ignorant than all the wisdom of earth and heaven? Thou hast wisely shaped thy creatures, O Father. Thou makest great servants of us in a way we know not of. Behold, I desire a mighty kingdom in heaven, and thou gavest one into my hand. Yea, I flattered myself with my success. I laughed at the gods who had been before my time. How things are changed now, O Jehovah. Thou hast made me a servant of servants. Yea, by my own hand have I bound myself about. Have I not heard mortals say, Oh, that I had a kingdom to rule over. Oh, that I had great riches. How good I would be. And because thou deniest them for their own good, they complain against thee. Who shall answer for the vanity of men and angels? They have not patience with thee who created them alive and knowest what is best. One saith, yonder is a great king. Why doeth he not good? Why doeth he not great good? Or yonder is a rich man. Why doeth he not a great good also? Oh, that I were in their places. How shall I show them, O oh Father, that to be a king is to go away from doing good, that to be a rich man is to, is to deny goodness? Yea, by the very act of possession, he is testimony in the opposite way. For he that is good giveth all, even as thou gavest all, and so made all things. And greater the possession, the greater the bondage. Ooh. And greater the possession, the greater the bondage. Like they say, more money, more problems. Deny them for, look, Tiffany. Deny them for their own good. Sheesh. Girl, this is hitting me deep down in my shot, my mind today. <laughs> Let me go back. Verse 35, y'all, look. How shall I show them, O oh Father, that to be a king is to go away from doing good. That to be a rich man is to deny goodness. Yea, by the very act of possession is he testimony in the opposite way. For he that is good giveth all. Even as thou gavest all and made so all things. And the greater the possession, the greater the bondage. Who hath so small responsibility as he who hath nothing? This is the sum of wisdom, O Jehovah, and all men and all angels, soon or late, will acknowledge it. <laughs> this is so good. Look, verse 36. Better hast thou made it for the servant than for the master, better for the poor than the rich. And these things will also come to their understanding. And these things will also come to their understanding in course of time. But how can I, O oh Father, make them to know wisdom without experience, to accept the testimony of others' tortures in hell? Behold, thou gavest me great learning when I was of the earth, and when in Hada, great advantages to attain to deep wisdom. But after all, I was caught in the snare of my own setting. How much then, O oh Father, must I expect of the multitude? Happy is he who hath nothing and desireth only wisdom and love. To cultivate such a garden, what a harvest will ripen out unto him. When the three had thus spoken before the throne, remember, they're standing at the judgment seat speaking this. Like, you about to go in for punishment, my G. And all you can do is, Lord, praises on the creator. Take me to that throne of judgment any day. <laughs> look, look. When the three had thus spoken before the throne and before the high council, Ahura stood aside and spake also. He said, and that's, believe it or not, that's the end of that chapter, but it goes on in the next chapter. I just need to double check my Roman numeral. 19. Chapter 19, page 428. Oh, that I could sing thee a song of delight, 
thou all highest, or find the words to make plain thy marvelous ways. But thou hast limited me as a shadow of which thou art the substance. Thy causes are deep and of long times. My judgment less than a breath of air. I resolve and reason and devise, but all is nothing before thee. Today my soul is buoyed up with great rejoicing. Thou hast sent me my loves. I would bind them with sweet words. Their wisdom would I feast upon forever. In thy great mercy, Jehovah, thou hast showed me a world of delight. How can I repay thee or thy countless millions make to understand the way of rejoicing? Oh, that I could show them the secret way of bliss or turn them in direction of the all highest. Could they be the within to know? Could they be the within? Okay. Still not making sense to me. Okay. Could they be the within? And within is actually capitalized. Could they be the within to know the delight of that which proceedeth outward? Oh, that I could make them understand to look upward instead of downward, to look inward instead of outward. And now the outward, it has reference number four, and it says onward. How thou, how thou followest up thy wayward children, thy truants that strive to go away from thee. They wander off, and thou givest the slack of the leading line unto them. They go as if around a circle and come to the place of beginning at last. Oh, that I could prevail upon them in a start that I could save them the first journey of the circle. Oh, that they would go slowly with thee always, O Jehovah. But thou enrichest them with the bounty, with thy bounteous fields. They travel far and are foot sore and weary. And the twain causes are as a new book of songs. Oh, that's that. <laughs> that's beautiful. Listen. He said, when they go on a long journey away from you, when they find themselves back around the bend at the starting point, you know what? I see why you let them go. Because now they come back with new songs of praise unto you on why you shouldn't take the whole fast circle. Go slow and stay with the creator. Take your time and learn. You ain't got nothing but time. Even if you don't, at least you'll still be on the right path to be in line with the light of the creator. Listen. Verse 4. Oh, that I could make them understand to look upward instead of downward, to look inward instead of outward. How thou followest up thy wayward children, thy truants that strive to go away from thee. They wander off and thou givest the slack of the leading line unto them. They go as if around a circle and come to the place of beginning at last. Oh, that I could, pre oh, that I could prevail upon them in the start that I could save them the first journey of the circle. Oh, that they would go slowly with thee always, Jehovah. But thou enrichest them with thy bounteous fields. They travel far and are foot sore and weary. And the twain causes are as a book of new songs. Oh, that experience may never die. And thy creations never cease to have adventurous sons and daughters. Oh, that I could understand thy greatness or find in the darkness the light that glorifieth thy countenance. And at the countenance is reference number five. And at the bottom of the top, it says, find the darkness that glorifieth the light of thy countenance. Oh, that I could understand thy greatness or find in the darkness the light that glorifieth thy countenance. I drink deep of my own folly, and my eyes wander about because of the darkness. I come upon thy pathway and burst forth with a song of delight. Yea, I rejoice for the darkness I have passed through. In this am I more buoyant in my love to thee, my creator. How can I make all thy people to sing songs unto thee, or teach them to harp not forever on the dark side of things? I have seen the tree of hell they planted in their own souls and the way they cultivate it. They know not what is meant by singing praises unto thee and of thy growth in them. 
Why will they interpret me by words or realize not that I sing of the exuberance of the soul? Oh, that I could inspire them to talk good of all things, to harp forever on the beauties thou hast made instead of the ills and horrors around about. Can they never understand what is to sow the seed of the tree of endless delight? Can they never understand what it is to sow the seed of the tree of endless delight? Oh, that I could call unto them. Oh, that I could call unto thee, Jehovah, or that I could lift up their aspiration up from the shadows of death. I will follow them into thy great God. I'm sorry. Let me start over. I will follow them into thy two great gardens, which thou hast created, that which is green, where they go and curse thee, and that which is ripe, where I have found thee full of love. Because I said, sing unto him forever. Pray to him with great rejoicing. They interpret me to mean words uttered as a mockingbird. Yea, they grumble forever. To find thee, O Jehovah, to glorify the good that cometh along. This is the salvation of the world. Of this, my songs shall never end. Without a shadow of darkness, thou wilt tune my voice forever. I will sing and dance before thee. The germ of happiness in my soul will I nurse as thy holiest gift. But that is good for highlighting. Listen. I will sing and dance before thee. The germ of happiness in my soul will I nurse as thy holiest gift. For all the trees which thou hast planted in the soul of men and angels, this is the most glorious. For it is the perfection of thy voice which singeth in all thy living creatures. When the horror ended his song, then spake Lika, for the voice of Jehovah was upon him. He said, Many leaders have I created for the earth and her heavens, but not one have I created with power to make a leader of himself. My hand is upon them that I choose. With wisdom and power raise I them up from the beginning. To a people on the earth I give a king. To the inhabitants of my heavens give I lords and gods. Because you have tried the fullness of self and raised up mighty realms in heaven, but come to naught before my hand, ye are as a new power in these heavens. I read that again. Because ye have tried the fullness of self and raised up mighty realms in heaven, but to come to naught before my hand, ye are as a new power in these heavens. As by the name Jehovah, I have maintained the faithest in earth and heaven. So shall ye rule over my enemies in righteousness and love and good works by the names Lord and God, which they shall worship until the coming of the next dawn. But I will come in that day and deliver you and them, and there shall be no more Lord or God upon the earth or in the heavens thereof. Grieve not that ye have had great kingdoms and have been overthrown and cast into torments, for ye have been so prepared in my works that I might reach them that are not of flesh and blood of my faithest. And inasmuch as ye have gone to the farthest limit of glory and the darkness of hell, so will I give unto you wisdom, love, and power accordingly. For to make ready for the cosmon error, I want not a few, but thousands of millions in heaven and earth to inspire such as live in darkness. So we working with them in the cosmic area, y'all. Just like they working and inspiring, we're also working and inspiring for it to be the greatest harvest ever known in heaven and earth coming out of our era cosmic. I'm so excited about this. Listen, for to make ready for the cosmic era, I want not a few, but thousands of millions in heaven and earth to inspire such as live in darkness. As I delivered you, so shall ye deliver them, because they will accursed themselves with war and with standing armies for the sake of earthly glory unto their rulers. Ye shall encompass them about and break them up and deliver them into my kingdoms, which are peace and love. 
<clears throat> Tiffany, I'm trying to hold it together, sis. Look, she said, girl, don't you start crying. I can't take it this morning. Look, I'm trying to pull myself together. But I really am. Look, if I was reading this by myself, I'd, I'd be ugly crying. I'd be ugly crying right now, y'all. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, this is my first time going through it. So all of it, if I haven't like jumped ahead and read something, but it's still different when you read it from the beginning all the way to the end. It's like every little part is filled in and it, it just, you get the fullness of it when you're reading it through from the beginning, like not jumping around, right? So it's, it's still different. That'd be a weepy mess right now. Okay, verse 19. <clears throat> As ye have been delivered out of hell, so shall ye deliver the kings and queens of the earth out of their kingdoms, wherein they will unknowingly bind themselves in condemnation before me. They shall be made to understand that whoso assumeth a kingdom shall not rule it unto his own glory without reaping the fruits of hell. Ooh. Listen, listen, let me let me just bring out something here. Even those, I know none of y'all here ain't doing it, right? But I'm just saying, <clears throat> excuse me, even those, yeah. no, look, we talked about this yesterday. No, leave it alone. Leave it alone. No, because I still didn't ask yesterday. Um, even those who are building churches and have churches, these are like small little kingdoms as well, right? Listen to what they said. As ye have been delivered out of hell, so shall ye deliver the kings and queens of the earth out of their kingdoms, wherein they will unknowingly bind themselves in condemnation before me. They shall be made to understand that whoso assumeth a kingdom shall not rule it unto his own glory without reaping the fruits of hell. So if you're not running your kingdom with Jehovah, or the great spirit, the most holy as being the 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 foundation and foremost. Mom, you can make me a smoothie. When I'm done, you're gonna find yourself reaping the fruits of hell, right? And now I'm 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 specifically talking about the ones who say, especially churches, right? Because it's a lot of them out there. I see them. The ones who say that they're doing the work of the Lord, but it's really a show for them for their own selves a show for their own selves and it's easy to pick them out right let me tell you something it's easy to spot some of them if you mm, let me be careful with my words because i love them the brethren and sister right the one well let me just i'm gonna just leave it like that because i might say something real offensive not that I care, but I, I do care in a way. Um, but it, it's it's easy it's easy to spot them. They're they're instead of doing the work of the Lord or the Most Holy and the church really being about others, being a servant to others, it really becomes a show for them and a place where they can gratify their flesh. Right? Stay away from those places. If they don't listen, you just ask them questions, Pastor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm confused about something, right? At least those with good hearts that may have lost their will a little bit, that may not realize what they're doing. At least maybe by asking a question, give them the opportunity to wake up, right? Just like Uhura went to his friends, hey, man, look, you don't want to go down this road. Hey, you know, the, you know, at least give them the opportunity. If you're in a position where the father can use you to give them the opportunity to choose not to go down the wrong road, to let this place to be a... a, a a place that they're going to regret building, at least say something. If the father allows you the space, right? Especially somebody you know and you love, right? Shucks me. Say something to me. If y'all see me ever, right? Listen, because I'm going I'm to I'm li I'm, I'm listen eventually. Hopefully, right when you say something. I, I really try to work on taking corrective criticism at the time it's given, right? Oh, I practiced that a lot with my husband, like I had to. For years, I didn't. I just like gone somewhere because you don't know what you're talking about. I got this until I realized I didn't got this. <laughs> and then it's like, babe, Mr. Lee about to chop my hands off if I don't pay the rent. 
That was my going postal story. Look, I'm telling you, I'm about to be thrown in the middle of a knot, my G. Look, every time we're coming after me. I was like, I got to give this kingdom up. Look, I'm fine. We're living a simple life. I'll come help you run your kingdom. What would you have me do? Oh, wonderful husband. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What do you need? And what time would you like to eat your lunch? I, you know what? I will make your lunch and bring it to you. And while you're eating lunch, I'm going to go ahead and clean your desk off. I'm going to respond to your emails. Like, I'm become the biggest servant of all servants. <laughs> Look, okay. All right. I'm going to playing around. But no, seriously, though, I was. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine with living a simple life. Okay, verse 19. As ye have been delivered out of hell, so shall ye deliver the kings and queens of the earth out of their kingdoms, wherein they will unknowingly bind themselves in condemnation before me. They shall be made to understand that whoso assumeth a kingdom shall not rule it unto his own glory without reaping the fruits of hell. When the king goeth forth, he shall not be afraid, he will be cut down, nor shall his marshals stand about him to protect him. For my person shall shield him, and his people will shout with great joy when his steps draw nigh. To serve me is not in prayer only, or in rites and ceremonies, excuse me, but in stretching forth the hand to do good unto others with all of one's might. Now, if you have your highlighters, go ahead and pick a different color and highlight that portion, brethren and sistren. <laughs> Listen. To serve me, to serve the great spirit, the most holy, the ever present, right? To serve me is not in prayer only or in rites and ceremonies, but in stretching forth the hand to do good unto others with all of one's might because ye have proved that force and violence only established for a day but are not of me so shall ye make them understand that whoso useth force and violence or armies to sustain himself is not of me but is my enemy and is on the way to destruction right so we ain't got to fight this out my dream right you want to win this argument? I'll let you win it. But I'm still your friend in the end. Right? We can do this without hurting one another, without tearing each other down. You may not see that right now, but it's okay. I'll come back to you later. We can work through this. Because you have proved that force and violence only established for a day and are not of me, so shall ye make them understand that whoso useth force and violence or armies to sustain himself is not of me, but is my enemy and is on the way to destruction. Whoso being a king or a general or a captain and in war, either offensive or defensive, professing to serve me by rites and ceremonies and praises is a mocker of me and my kingdoms. Yea, a blasphemer in my sight. All of those warriors of the Lord. You hear what he just said? Take that battle gear off. Take it off. Because you have proved that force and violence only established for a day and are not of me, so shall you make them understand that whoso useth force and violence. Remember what John the Baptist said? Do the opposite of what he said in the New Testament. We don't take it by force, right? Because you have proved that force and violence only established for a day and are not of me, so shall ye make them understand that whoso useth force and violence or armies to sustain himself is not of me, but is my enemy and is on the way to destruction. Whoso being a king or a general or a captain and in war, either offensive or defensive, professing to serve me, by rites and ceremonies and praises, all my Hebrew brethren in a purple garb marching on the corners. Y'all need to head to the mall, get y'all some new clothes, become a gray man. Whoso being a king or a general or a captain and in war, either offensive or defensive, professing to serve me by rites and ceremonies and praises is a mocker of me and my kingdoms, yea, a blasphemer in my sight. And he provided, and he provided the way of his own torments. 
These are my creations. To answer force with force, violence with violence, mockery with mockery, alike and like as seed is sown, so shall the harvest come unto the source. Neither shall evil and darkness and misery cease on the earth till I have disbanded the dealers in death. By my own hand will I liberate the nations of the earth. Their armies shall go away like the winter's snow in sun of summer, to which end ye shall be my workers with wisdom, love, and power. And this whole chapter need to be high lit up. <laughs> I need another color. Look, yo, this so good, y'all. Brother say la shalom. Create a gang gang in the building. Shalom, brother. All right, y'all. That was the end of this chapter. Where we at? <gasps> Wait. No, I started at 7.30. I got like 20 more minutes. <laughs> 7.30? No. You know, I ain't put on my watch. Who yet? We are at the hour mark, though. Mm -hmm. We're going to read one more chapter. One more chapter, y'all. One more chapter. Darn it. Okay. Chapter 20. During the fourth year of dawn, the voice of Jehovah came to Leka, saying, my son, thou shalt provide thyself an army sufficient, and thou shalt take away from the earth all angels below the first resurrection, save such fetals as are under the dominion of my heavenly rulers. And thou shalt provide them separately. And first of all, let's real quick remember right here. I, I think this right. He said, remove. He said, and thou shalt take away from the earth all angels below the first resurrection, save such fetals as are under the dominion of my heavenly rulers. And what I think this means right here, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. All the ones that are, I'm thinking the, the fetals are the infants that they allow to be fetal to their earth mother, right? Those are the ones I believe um, can stay. All right. During the fourth year of dawn, the voice of Jehovah came to Leka, saying, My son, thou shalt provide thyself an army sufficient, and thou shalt take away from the earth all angels below the first resurrection, save such fetals as are under the dominion of my heavenly rulers. And thou shalt provide them separate regions of my lower heavens, whence they cannot return to mortals. And thou shalt appoint rulers and teachers over them, to deliver them out of madness and evil and stupor. Jamea, shalom, sis. Verse 3. Of thy Ethereum host, thou shalt appoint teachers and rulers for this purpose. But at the end of dawn, they shall give over their places to atmospherians selected from Theo Varakistan. From this time forth, my atmospherians shall begin to help one another, not defending, I'm sorry, from this time forth, my atmospherians shall begin to help one another, not depending for all teachers to come from my Ethereum heavens. Lika then called up at Yesonitus. Then Lika called up at Yesonitus and told him of Jehovah's words and further added, To thee do I therefore allot this labor, and I give unto thee twelve generals, for the different regions of the earth, and unto each of the twelve I lot five million Ethereans, whom thou canst draw from the armies that were engaged in delivering the hills and knots. At Yesanitas, I think I said it wrong. At Yesanitas said, In Jehovah's will and thine, I am pleased. I will divide up the regions of the earth amongst the twelve generals and give unto each one of them the five million according to thy commandments. At ye Sanitas, then sent officers out into different regions and atmosphere to select the 60 million deliverers, commanding them to report in Theovrakistan, in the valley of Tish, his heavenly place, whether he took the 12 generals that Leka had assigned him. Leka gave to at ye Sanitas, a list of the spirits to be thus taken away from mortals, that is, the engrafted, the demons, the familiars, the vampires, and the lusters, 
and such other spirits as otherwise lead mortals into darkness and crime, showing him the regions of the earth where they were most numerous, with which list at Yesonitas and his generals made themselves well acquainted before starting on his perilous enterprise. At Yesonitas then ordered the shipbuilders to provide, to provide him 12,000 fireboats with bulwarks of fire and with gateways. In the meantime, Lika sent Yasumis with 400 geographers and mathematicians and surveyors to find the necessary plateau to which at Yusanitas could send his captured host. Yusamis therefore founded the six heavenly plateaus known as the Yugsadisipi, Dispi, a name signifying heaven of the destroying serpents. These then were the six heavens of Yugsadisipi, to wit, to Walla Walla. That name has got to be in the title. To Walla Walla, over Arabinia, 1,200 miles high, Seti Song, over Vidu, 1,000 miles high, Goedi, over Japheth, 1,100 miles high, Elapub, over Europa, 1,000 miles high, Apac, over North and South Guatama, 600 miles high, and bordering on Yatanti, the subject the subjective heaven of the ancients, which was now being reestablished by Kaparos and few over Chihuahi, Chihuahi, 9,000 miles high. Usamas provided these heavens with no roadways in order to prevent the delivered spirits flocking together, in which case they might run into anarchy, hells, and accordingly, appointed unto each of these heavens one ruler of the rank primal god, selecting them from the Ethereum host, but empowering them to bestow their thrones on successors at the end of dawn, giving terms of office not less than 200 years, but subject to the limiting power of God of Theovrokistan. Lika gave 4,000 messengers to at Yesonitus, and 12,000 messengers to Eusimus, to whom he also gave 60 million laborers. But each of them provided their own heralds, musicians, marshals, and captains in their own way. Now, therefore, at Esonitas and Eusimus, receiving their armies of laborers, fell to work, the former to delivering and the latter to receiving the Druhas of the earth, and Eusimus put his host to building houses and hospitals, heavenly places, and to go, I'm sorry, and to founding cities and provinces through the primal gods under him. And that, my beautiful people, is where we will end today. It's Mom. Monday. Mom, I'm in it. Yes, it is Monday. August the 8th. 2022, day 180 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets, under the four-year consecutive day count, day 1,198. We just finished reading the, in the Owaspi, book of Lika, page 421 to page 432. Man, time really flew by fast today. I don't even feel like I've been reading for an hour. All right, y'all, but that is it. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah. Make sure I miss no questions. I'm just flew by today, y'all. Um, Tabitha, I just saw your comment. My folks are Jehovah's Witnesses and Baptists, so oh, I speak is a struggle for them to accept. So my work is heavy. Sis, we with you. We with you. Yeah, we are. The faith is all minority right now, but we're growing. Creator, gang, gang, home. Oh. All right, y'all. That is it. I know. Feel like 15 minutes, she, bro. 
Oh, well, global you purpose. Me, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, y'all. That is mm -hmm. it for today. I think I missed anything over here on Facebook from anybody. But thank y'all for hanging out. I love y'all. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. And may the creator continue leading us all. And may we find our other brethren and sistering who are waking up to the creator only becoming a part of the creator gang. Gang, right? We small, like she was saying. We small, but we growing. I love y'all. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow. On time. I'm going to be on time tomorrow. 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.